Hello and welcome to my channel Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our discussion about pulmonary medicine. In the previous video we have discussed tuberculosis. Today we'll talk about pneumonia aka lung infection usually has consolidation or the lung has become a solid organ and instead of fluffy and airy it's now solid. That's why you have increased tactile vocal fremitus, increased egophony and bronchophony and whispering pictoriloquy and dullness on percussion because now your lung is solid. With that being said, now let's get started. What's the definition of pneumonia? Inflammation of the parenchyma of the lung. Could be bacterial or viral. Could be lober or interstitial. Could be lober bronchopneumonia or interstitial pneumonia. Could be unilateral or bilateral could be community acquired or hospital acquired. All of these are the old classifications of pneumonia. We'll discuss the old first because they still come up on your exam and then we'll discuss the new classification. Typical pneumonia versus atypical pneumonia. Typical has the typical presentation. Translation, you're fine today. Tomorrow, suddenly you develop a high grade fever, 104. You have a productive cough and you are severely ill. This is typical. Atypical, on the other hand, aka interstitial, ah, atypical presentation, you're fine today. Tomorrow, you're slightly worse. The day after, a little more worse. And the following day, even worse, and so on. You feel crappier, and then crappier, and even more crappier. Organism typical, usually streptnomo. Atypical, mycoplasma, chlamydia, RSV, influenza, and adeno. Onset, rapid onset, as you see, but atypical is very slow onset. And then the fever here is high grade, here it's low grade. Again, all of this is archaic and has nothing to do with the real world. Fever, high grade and typical, low grade and atypical. Cough, productive and typical, dry and atypical. Here is the exudate in the alveoli, therefore you have consolidation and productive cough. It's not in the alveoli, it's actually in the interstitial space. That's why there is no consolidation and no productive cough. Because we say consolidation when there is an exudate inside the alveoli and since you have like millions of these alveoli and now they are filled with exudate it's as if your lung has become solid hence consolidation here the inflammatory cells are neutrophils aka polymorph nuclear here are the macrophages aka mononuclear because they have like one nucleus and then this polymorph nuclear because it could be like this segmented or it could be like a basophil or an eosinophil like this, etc. Location, an entire freaking lobe of the lung. Consolidation, here it's interstitial, it's just some streaky, striky fibrosis. Consolidation, yes, no, symptoms, productive cough, high fever, tachycardia, here pleuritic chest pain, flu-like symptoms, and low-grade fever. Signs of consolidation present, absent, what are the signs of consolidation? Increased TVF, increased bronchophony, increased egophony, increased whispering pictoriloquy, dullness to percussion. By the way, interstitial pneumonia is not classified as pneumonia anymore. The new classification classifies interstitial pneumonia into acute interstitial pneumonia and chronic interstitial pneumonia, which are restrictive lung diseases that we have discussed before. They are kind of similar to cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, bronchiolitis, obliterans kind of thing. What do you mean by organizing? I mean fibrosis interstitial fibrosis which is different from an entire lobe consolidation that involves the actual alveoli another archaic classification of pneumonia community acquired nosocomial acquired or hospital acquired what's the deal you contract it from a fellow member of the community nosocomial you contract it from the bacteria from within the hospital the patient came to the hospital without pneumonia and developed pneumonia while in the hospital here the patient came in contact with a sick fella, which is usually commoner in low socioeconomic status, contact with sick patients, sepsis, etc. Nosocomial, you came to the hospital for another reason, weak immunity, or you are on antibiotics, or you have severe underlying disease. Organism, mostly gram-positive bacteria, also known as streptnomo or pneumococci, which are gram-positive diplococci that look like a lancet. Here they are mostly gram negative. So, streptnomo for community acquired. For hospital acquired, you have like bacteria that are in the freaking hospital. 
E. coli, Pseudomonas, and Staph aureus, especially the ugly MRSA, Mesicillin resistant Staph aureus. E. coli, if you have indwelling urinary catheter, because the number one cause of urinary tract infections are E. coli. Pseudomonas, if you are on a ventilator, and this is called ventilator associated pneumonia. Staph aureus, and there is another staph called Staph epidermidis, if you have an IV catheter. This could be typical or atypical. This is always atypical. Again, I don't care because this is archaic mechanism. While sleeping, the patient aspires some orphangel content, go to line, leading to infection. Or, infected person coughs in your face. This is called aerosol or droplet infection or airborne infection. And you end up with pneumonia or bloodstream infection. You had pyemia, septic embolus in the blood, and they went to the lung. Histological subtypes of pneumonia, lobar pneumonia, bronchopneumonia, interstitial pneumonia, which is not even like an actual pneumonia or lung infection. It's AIP, CIP, which is interstitial fibrosis. It's a restrictive lung disease. Lobar pneumonia, you have consolidation of the entire freaking lobe of the lung. Lobar consolidation, you may end up with lung abscess, empyema, or sepsis. Bronchopneumonia, you have not a lobe, but patchy infiltrates, like this, some patches. They might extend into the alveoli leading to consolidation. Both of these have consolidation, but interstitial has no consolidation. No classification of pneumonia. You have four types. This is the actual science today. Community-acquired pneumonia, typical or atypical. Healthcare-associated pneumonia. Hospital-acquired pneumonia. Ventilator-associated pneumonia. Now, if you have two brain cells that rub together or synapse together, you might think hospital-acquired pneumonia and ventilator-associated pneumonia should be subtypes of healthcare-associated pneumonia. And the answer is yes, you're absolutely right. But for some stupid reason, the people who write those guidelines just separated them as separate categories. And by healthcare-associated pneumonia, they think of a patient who is not hospitalized but has an extensive contact with healthcare setting. Example, nursing home, or a nurse in the hospital, or a doctor in the hospital. Okay, we get it. Community acquired pneumonia, typical and atypical, depending on the organism. Typical organisms are strep pneumo, hemophilus influenza, and staph aureus. Atypical are mycoplasma pneumonia, chlamydia pneumonia, legionella pneumonia, and some fungi, histoplasma, mosplasma, mycos, coccidomycos, we have talked about them before in my first video called Lung Infection and Introduction. Viruses such as influenza virus, adenovirus, when I say adeno, think conjunctivitis, and RSV respiratory syncytia virus. The idea that typical has high grade and atypical has low grade, typical has productive cough, atypical has non-productive cough is uh, just for the textbook, but actual patients, very hard to differentiate. How to treat community acquired pneumonia have two options. Empiric treatment when the organism is still unknown. Okay, we order culture, but they will take like three days to come back. Should we like leave the patient to die? No, we just threw everything at him that we suspect. It's called empiric treatment based on empiric evidence statistically. Example, most of the patients who have community acquired pneumonia is due to streptococcal pneumonia. So let's give them an antibiotic to cover streptococcal pneumonia even before we confirm the diagnosis with streptococcal pneumonia just by playing odds. This is called empiric treatment or organ-specific treatment. The cultures finally came back and they confirmed the diagnosis of strep pneumo. Let's narrow our antibiotics to just cover this ugly strep pneumo. Diagnosis of pneumonia, history of contact with sick patients and symptoms. Cough, okay, is it productive? Yes, usually productive. Chest pain, which is common or an atypical. Fever, high grade and typical, low grade and atypical, and flu-like symptoms. What the flip is flu-like symptoms, two aches and two itis. Muscle ache, headache, pharyngitis, laryngitis. And by the way, muscle ache is also known as myalgia. Because myo means muscle, alja means pain. That's why we call them analgesic, because an means no, Algesia is pain. No pain, no gain. On physical exam in pneumonia, it's an infection. Tachycardia, hyperthermia, fever and tachycardia and leukocytosis. What are the signs of consolidation? On inspection, you cannot get consolidation by just inspection. Get your head out of your sphincter. Palpation, you have increased tactile vocal fremitus. Percussion, consolidation gives you a dull node. Normally, it should be resonant. 
auscultation, breath sounds, bronchial breath sounds. Normally they are vesicular. Vesicular are like this. But bronchial is like when you put the stethoscope on your trachea and listen to this. Bronchial or tubular breath sounds look like this. You hear both inspiration and expiration and expiration is longer than inspiration because this is normal. So this is one third and this is two third. It's like this. But vesicular breath sounds are like this. You only hear inspiration and just one third of expiration like this. Other signs of consolidation include increased egophony, bronchophony, and whispering pictoroliquy. Egophony starts with an E. So tell the patient, please say E. And you put the stethoscope and you hear it A. E. A. E. A. This is called egophony. Bronchophony is when whispering remains as loud in the periphery as in the center. So here is your lung. When you put the stethoscope here near the bronchi, you should hear louder whispering. So ask the patient, sir, please whisper. One, two, three. One, two, three. You put the stethoscope here, it should be louder than here. This is normal. But when you have consolidation, this has become solid. And as you know, solid is better at transmitting sound than liquid than air. It's called a mechanical wave. So whether you put the stethoscope here close to the center or here closer to the periphery, it's the same freaking intensity. This is called bronchophony. Also, there is whispering pictoroliquy. Ask the patient to whisper. One, two, three. One, two, three. But you hear it very loud and clear. One, two, three. One, two, three. And in pneumonia, you might find crackles and they are late inspiratory. Crackles are either early or late. Think about it. Early, it means while the air is coming in, it hit like a thick bronchus, okay, and it's early. But if the problem is in the alveoli, it's probably going to be late because the air takes time until it reaches the periphery, like think. So, early crackles are seen in chronic bronchitis, a proximal problem, and asthma, a proximal problem, and shamefully emphysema, which is a distal problem, but just add it here. Late crackles, on the other hand, happens more with restrictive lung disease because they are more distal. So you have fibrosing alveolitis, asbestosis, pneumonia, pulmonary congestion due to heart failure or pulmonary edema, pulmonary sarcoidosis, or any pulmonary fibrosis. It's a pneumonia, it's a lung infection, you'll have fever and leukocytosis. What kind of leukocytosis? Neutrophilic leukocytosis. Lots of neutrophils. Why? Because it's usually bacterial. And as you know, neutrophils are those cells who fight bacteria. ESR and CRP are high because it's an inflammation. Sputum analysis, gram serum culture to detect the freaking organism. Radiology. If it's lobe or pneumonia, you'll find consolidation of an entire lobe of the lung. Or it doesn't have to be 100%, nearly entire. In bronchopneumonia, you'll have patchy areas of consolidation. In interstitial pneumonia, which is a, actually a fibrosis, you'll find interstitial infiltrates. Makes perfect sense. Complications of pneumonia, such as pleural empyema. When pneumonia has complications, we call it para-pneumonic. So here is, let's say, here is the pneumonia. And then we have a bronchopleural fistula, like this, connecting the lung with the pleura. And then you can have pus in the pleura called pleural empyema. And then this pus can form a septic embolus that goes to the blood. The septic embolus can go literally anywhere, including the brain forming brain abscess. Normally, your pleura should contain a thin film of fluid with no air. But the lung is full of air. When you form this bronchopleural fistula, you can get air from the lung and into the pleural surface, leading to pneumothorax. That's another complication. Spread on infection anywhere and if this pneumonia lead to pew, a rupture or a puncture of a large vessel, it can lead to an internal bleeding and even death. Treatment. If it's caused by streptococci, penicillins, cephalosporins, macrolides, tetracycline, and pulmonary fluoroquinolones. 
Empiric treatment while waiting for the culture. It depends. Are you talking about an outpatient or an inpatient case? If it's outpatient, with no modifying factors, give azithromycin or doxycycline. But if it's outpatient with modifying factors, give pulmonary or respiratory fluoroquinolones. What do you mean by modifying factors? I mean an elderly, alcoholic, or immunocompromised, or resistant to beta-lactam, or a patient with COPD or diabetes. Next, let's talk about inpatient treatment of pneumonia. Non-ICU, give respiratory fluoroquinolone. In the ICU, go radical, just go all in. Fluoroquinolone plus a beta-lactam. There is a risk of influenza virus, give a neuraminidase inhibitor such as the famous oseltamivir. If there is risk of pseudomonas, give anti-pseudomonal antibiotics, like one, no, two. Just go all in. If there is risk of MRSA, give vancomycin or lenizolid. By the way, staph can be resistant to vancomycin and it's called versa. Vancomycin resistant staph aureus. In this case, give lenizolid. My favorite part of the lecture, sepsis and pneumonia are two of the most common causes of ARDS. Neutrophils and pulmonology. Neutrophils in the alveoli think pneumonia, alveolitis, emphysema, interstitial fibrosis. But neutrophils in the pulmonary vessels think sepsis. Pneumonia in the immunocompromised. If you have HIV, you have increased risk of opportunistic infection that are not commonly seen in healthy individuals. That's why we call them opportunistic, because they see their opportunity when you have weak immunity. Example, CMV pneumonia. Okay, have you ever seen CMV pneumonia in a patient who is immunocompetent? Never. PCP pneumonia, also known as pneumocystis pneumonia, by the pneumocystis gyrovici, or gyrovici. And the old name is pneumocystis carinii. Aspergillus fumigatus pneumonia. Again, you do not see these organisms in immunocompetent patients. You only see them in immunocompromised patients. You can divide crackles into early crackles and late crackles based on the timing. Or based on the quality into wet crackles and dry crackles. Wet crackles is like the Egyptian hookah. It's like air and fluid coming in contact with each other, forming bubbles. It's like when you bring a glass of water and a, a straw and then blow air into the water and it's like blah, 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 this is wet crackles. Dry crackles or Velcro crackles, it's like your old grandpa shoe that he got from England with a very thick sole. It's like this. <laughs> Wet crackles is when you have air and water, such as exudate, which is kind of watery, in an alveoli that normally has air, or pulmonary edema when you have a fluid in the alveoli that normally have air. That's wet crackles. Dry crackles when you have interstitial pulmonary fibrosis because of these thick fibers forming like... <laughs> now we have a dilemma. Both interstitial pulmonary fibrosis and pneumonia have crackles. How can we tell the difference? Only pneumonia will have egophony, bronchophony, whispering, pictoroliquy, etc. Why? Because in pneumonia there is actually a consolidation. There is exudate in the alveoli. But in interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, it's not in the alveoli, it's in the interstitium. So the alveoli are normal, so there is no consolidation. So there are no signs of consolidation, including egophony, bronchophony, whispering, pictoroliquy, etc. Also, in pneumonia, you will find bronchial or tubular breath sounds, but in interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, they are vesicular breath sounds. Influenza virus can lead to a viral infection or a viral pneumonia, then bacteria can jump on top of the virus called bacterial superinfection, and this bacteria is usually staph aureus. You should not give antibiotics if it's an influenza virus, because antibiotics are like antibacterial or against bacteria. But when they develop bacterial superinfection, now you should give antibacterials. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, join the tribe, hit the bell, and smash like. Get my Facebook cases. I have a hundred cases there. You can get the notes of this video, cases, post notes, PDF notes, premium videos, audio notes, organized by topic in clean Dropbox folders. Just go to patreon.com slash medicosis. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.